the thing that you're making plus something aside for the future and i believe that it will be very important there are different dynamics when it comes to serving different avenues that you can utilize to serve at the same time today we'll discuss the challenges that do come with serving talk about the high cost of living right now in the country you ask yourself amidst this tough economic situation how do i serve that will be part of the discussion but before we go deep into it this conversation of course it's been powered by our very able partners ministry of labor and social protection we also have our post bank retirement benefits authority and safari Sako society limited these are our partners even as we discuss matter savings right here on transform kenya and today my panel is very rich trust you me i know you've been watching the cabinet secretaries vetting and everyone has been telling their net worth yeah not that kind of rich maybe that kind of rich but you're talking about rich in experience when it comes to matter savings in different platforms on my immediate left is Mr. Sandeep Raichura, who is the CEO of Zamara Group and also the chair of Kenya Pension Fund Investment Consortium, uh, Kepfik. And uh, he has over 30 years experience in actuarial pensions and investment consultancy, both in the UK and here in Kenya. And we're glad to have you, sir. Welcome to the panel. Next to him, we have Mr. Rafael Mingistian. Lekolo, who's the CEO of Postbank. Well, banking is very critical and uh, we are talking about unbanked. How do we bring them to the fold and how do we utilize this institution to boost savings culture? Uh, Mr. Lekolo, but from being CEO of Postbank, is also uh, he has over two decades experience in banking and insurance. He holds an MBA from Cardiff Business School tell you when the i say the panel is rich is definitely rich next to mr lekolo we have dr alfred oma shem who is the chief manager and head of research and strategy uh, department at uh, the retirement benefits authority rba he'll be telling us how you can prepare for your sunset years majority of kenyans are going into uh, retirement you're not able to work at the same time we don't have money to support you how can you correct that well he is previously served as fin access and inclusion uh, lead at the cbk and he holds a phd in economics university of cologne in germany glad to have you sir next to dr alfred oma we have Joseph Njoroga, the CEO of Safari Sako Societies Limited, and uh, that is a very familiar name, Sakos. How do we utilize Sakos? Sakos have really grown in the country. In fact, when many other institutions were going in the deep during the pandemic, Sakos were increasing in savings. People were putting their money in Sakos. How can you utilize that platform? to make sure that you're boosting martyr savings in the country. He holds a CPA from Strathmore Business School and he has over 15 years experience in cooperative management. Don't let his young looks deceive you, Mr. Joseph Njoroge. And finally, at the far end is none other than Mr. Ivan Sumbui, who is the head of core business at the NSSF, National Social Security Fund. And I know NSSF has been at the pillar and at the focal point when it comes to the discussions we've been having over the past weeks in terms of boosting our national savings and increasing another zero to the 200 shillings that we've been contributing to as NSSF to at least 2,000 met with mixed reaction. You'll help us clarify why that is important and why that move is being pushed well it's time also we have our beautiful audience here with us remember transform kenya it's an inclusive uh discussion and it's not just a panel uh, of experts but you also have a very able audience here and uh, we are glad to have you guys uh, you look very sharp this evening 
uh, I aspire to be like you maybe some day later. But this is a beautiful, beautiful evening. So, gentlemen, I know we, we touched on, uh, on gender balance and gender parity uh, on the panel earlier on. And uh, this is something that we aspire to do, even as we talk about savings. But starting with this and deep. I mean, over 30 years experience in different sectors on matters like actuarial, pensions. When you talk about savings, is it a factor of income or is savings a factor of discipline? It's an excellent question, Noah. Um, first of all, let me say how delighted I am to be on this panel on World Savings Day and engage in a conversation with Kenyans on a subject that is very close to my heart. And the question that Noah has asked is, is very, very pertinent. And let me approach it from two perspectives. So at Zamara, we use an acronym called WISE. And the W in the, uh, sorry, and, the, and let me start from the end. The E is earnings or income. Mm -hmm. So you need an earning or income to be able to save. Okay? And, but it is that saving that enables you to invest and it is from that investment that you can create wealth. So our message to all Kenyans is let's become wise by taking a portion of our income, saving it, investing it well, and there are quite a number of options to invest and save that we will discuss today, because that is the key to wealth creation. Without saving, there is no investment and there is no wealth. Mm -hmm. Now, to your second point about is saving a function of income or discipline, I would say that, look, irrespective of your income bracket, whether you are formally employed, self-employed, in the informal sector, whether you have a regular income or an irregular income, no matter the income bracket, saving is important because everybody needs to save for the future. Okay. Now, there, therefore, I say that for, to everybody, saving is, also needs a discipline. And people, if you're not doing it now, you need to start doing it now because otherwise you will keep dodging the conversation on saving. Okay. And if you leave it to the future, it's going to run away from you. All right. That's, that's very important, uh, Mr. Lekulol. You know, we are, we are talking about the issue of discipline and an issue of income. But also there is another element of it, the issue of culture. Yeah? And we say, you know, Kenyans, we have a culture of keeping time. And I'm not being sarcastic at all in this situation. Yeah, if you ask a Kenyan, let's meet in town at 9, you'll meet there at 8.45 and you'll find him there. But in terms of now turning savings, is it, first of all, a function of, of discipline, income, or is it an issue of culture? Thank you, Noah. Um, it's uh, great to be here this important day for savings. Um, when you look at the theme for today, savings prepares you for a better future. Mm -hmm. So that one answers your question. Is it a culture issue? It should not. But in Kenya, we find, especially the young generation, uh, when you look at the way they spend, especially the earnings they get, they have this YOLO mentality, you only live once. So I don't know where that culture has come from. It's not really Kenyan, but it's um, something that I see amongst the youth who now want to consume mm. what they are earning. So when you look at it in terms of the culture, Africans are known to save. When you look at um, a typical African setting in the rural village, when they used to harvest, they used to have a granary, so they used to save. It's just the mechanism of saving that's changing. Right now, we're saying now start saving for this future instead of the food that you're saving. Mm -hmm. You're saving now the money that you're earning. And this is where now you put what uh, Sadipa said, either in this investment vehicle mm -hmm. or somewhere else. So the culture has always been there. Okay. It's just that now the, the way people are saving has to change and the mentality has to change. People have to uh, think mm -hmm. of the future. What is this future holding for me? Will I have money tomorrow to spend? So you need now to have that discipline and you have to have the income. And then once you have that income, now you bring this other culture aspect. I know uh, Kenyans who say, Kosamila ni mutumwa. Mm -hmm. We need now to go back to that original culture where people used to think about tomorrow. There is a tomorrow that you have to take care of. Yes. And that's where these granaries used to come in play. 
definitely and that's a good, very good analogy uh granaries i remember that yeah you you place there your maize when it's out of season you're able to get something we even used to sell some to make some money quite interesting there uh the terry there is the element that mr lekolola has mentioned yeah majority of us when we have an income which is the initial requirement you have an income the the challenge has always been you're weighing within yourself and it's human we only live once unless there's somebody with two lives yeah so you're always balancing between saving for for the future or living that once as young people call it yolo you only live once talk to me with with the current economic situation is it is it a factor to to consider or discipline overrides even the economic challenges that you're facing when it comes to the issue of saving uh, thank you very much now and thank you for inviting us to this panel on uh, world savings day yes let me start from uh, where my colleague has left you know it's, it's natural for a human being we say in economics that uh, we have a life cycle hypothesis so when you are young you're a baby growing up you go to school to build your human capital you are a borrower when you have built your human capital you've gotten a job you are earning income you spend and you save why are you saving you are saving because there's going to come a time when you can no longer work and your savings should be able to carry you through the rest of your life when you can no longer work so there's a phase for building human capital there's a safe when the human capital is now earning you income and you require to save there's a time when your human capital can let you down in other words you can no longer work Mm. but you are still alive you are not dead you needed to live and you needed to have put it, put savings aside so other than having income it requires discipline to be able to put something aside and we are coming from an environment where we now know that regardless of your level of income you are able to save whether you have a high income earner a low income earner whatever level of income you earn everybody has the potential to save it requires a lot, a lot of discipline if you can map out your life circle properly and we usually assume that human beings are rational beings most of the time they are not and that's where indiscipline sets in okay. and we encourage a lot of discipline to save definitely discipline is king uh, <laughs> you know we talk about the way the generations have evolved over time there's always that comparison we used to listen to this kind of music you know in our time we used to do this and that and now when you look at the average age of the continent of Africa it's pretty young they are about 19 20 Kenya is even younger we are a very young continent and when you talk about saving and transforming the saving culture we have to look at the way majority who are young people their, their, their serving culture and their serving patterns, sort of. Uh, coming to you, uh, Mr. Joseph Njoroge, is age a factor? Are older f folks, were they more wiser when it comes to preparing, when it comes to serving? Are they, uh, were they a little bit uh, more disciplined? And is there something that we can learn? Or is this new generation, we have to have a totally new approach when it comes to serving? Okay, thank you, Noah, for that question and also for having me in this panel this evening. Uh, I would say, uh, first of all, savings, yes, I agree, is, is a discipline. Mm -hmm. And it's also a habit uh, that you can pick uh, because it calls for self-denial at one point. Remember, you are postponing an expenditure now uh, for the future. Now, if you look at the earlier generations, yes, that habit was there, but I can say it has been dying off over time. And it's not that 
the young people have not been educated or they don't understand the importance of saving is just how we are living as a society. Uh, we are living in times where uh, we say we live for today and tomorrow we know how to take care of itself. Uh, which is, I would say, it's a bad culture that the young people have taken. That you fight uh, even institutions like circles and even uh, benefit schemes are no longer attractive to them. So what I would say is, uh, yes, the older generation had that vision, but it's not all lost. Uh, we still have, we can be able to salvage this younger generation. Mm -hmm. And in a day like today, just emphasize that need of having that savings culture in okay. them. And they understand that you may live, you live today and also for tomorrow. All right, yeah. definitely. As you live today, also think about tomorrow. And coming to you, Mr. Evans, you know, I'm thinking about we, we live in an organized society, yeah? We have a government, we have structures. In terms of serving as a culture or serving as a discipline, where, where does intentionality come from? Is it both personal and also the structure that we've created around? So the government, for example, pushing and saying we have to do this, or is it something that we start with an individual, then it comes out? Thank you for having me. Um, savings is uh, both culture and discipline, and it starts with an individual. You must have a plan for your tomorrow, for your future. I'm coming from a background where people are saving for their retirement. It may look very far and therefore perhaps affect uh, culture in the sense that somebody feels there's still time to save. But in essence, saving is, 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 is a habit and we need to start saving early. And the earlier you save, the better. And the more you save, the better for your tomorrow. Wow. The more you serve, the better for your tomorrow. So I, I want us to, to break this conversation down. We start with the individual because we've established it's synonymous that savings starts with the personal discipline, with your income, whichever amount. You have to put something aside for savings. So for an individual, Mr. Sandeep, what options do I have? How do I serve? How do I start that culture of serving from an individual point of view? Okay, hey, Noah, there are very many ways in which a Kenyan can save. Mm -hmm. okay, so obviously the one that I'm most fond of is the pension saving, which is saving for your old age. Okay? But what you find is that when you say to a 25 or a 30 year old Kenyan, save for your old age, it may not resonate with them. So therefore, you know, we need to change the savings narrative in our country and make it a little bit more aspirational at the individual level. That you save to achieve your dreams. You save to become financially independent. You save to invest and become wealthy, as I said earlier. And that's a very aspirational message that needs to be sent. And then there's a huge variety of options that people have. So pensions being one, SACOs is another very important way of saving. And, uh, and again, has other benefits as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many options that are now available on saving through unit trusts, whether it's money market funds, equity funds. There are quite a number of investment groups mm -hmm. that, you know, almost one in three Kenyans actually does belong to a chama. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we say that, you know, there's a culture in which Kenyans don't save, maybe that's not entirely true. Because I find that a lot of Kenyans do save, but maybe they don't prioritize it as retirement saving or saving for a purpose. Okay. So there are, there's a huge variety of options. But the one thing that I would also say to people is that, look, be careful where you save and how you save. Because, you know, there are so many people that I know of who are, are falling prey to pyramid schemes uh, or engaging in habits that they should not be doing when, if we keep passing the message that small amounts of savings can make a huge difference. If we give rules of thumb like a thousand shillings a month, mm. 10 years will give you 
200,000, but at 20 years, it will more than double to 700,000, and at 30 years, it's over 2 million, right? Just by taking, you know, looking at the power of compound interest. So getting that aspirational message across, giving the options, um, I, I think would make a big difference. Definitely. You know? uh, we have to incentivize serving as you put it and put a message behind it sort of a purpose because people are attracted to purpose what's the bigger Absolutely. picture i think that's very important and and i, I want to come to you mr lekulol because for you come from the banking sector yeah and often times we say how many kenyans have bank accounts this is becoming popular people are opening bank accounts by the day i don't know how fast but that as a tool as an avenue how can an individual kenyan who's watching tonight utilize their bank and start a savings culture thank you now for that question i think uh, most kenyans find themselves in a dilemma and uh, when you look at uh, where the banking um, institution has come in kenya they become quite stable most of the banks now are quite stable and we've not had many issues around them. So most of the banks now, depending on the product that they offer, can make it easy for you. For us, for example, when you look at Postbank, because we've been set up as a savings bank by the government, we give various incentives. If you save in Postbank, uh, the interest you earn is not subjected to withholding tax. So that's an incentive given by the government. So you can find the government is actually going out of its way to encourage people to save. So one of uh, some of the products we offer, or most of the products we offer, which are savings based, mm -hmm. have that incentive included there. So that if you save, you'll continuously be earning much more than somebody who is not saving um, in a bank because the interest you earn is not subject to that interest rate. The other key thing that uh, I always advise our customers is you, you, when you look at the product when you're saving, look at a product that does not charge you like monthly maintenance fees which are going to deplete the, your savings. So as you pick the product that you have, look for one that when you have that compounded interest that uh, Sandeep is talking about, is not be subjected to other administrative fees which are going to subject you to a reduction of what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the savings products that we have at Postbank because of the mandate we have, we've made sure that those accounts are not subjected to massive um, maintenance fees and some of them are actually exempt. So you'll find the money that you put, you put 2,000 today is still the money that you'll get at the end of the day with the additional interest. So your money is bound to grow. Mm -hmm. So the advice is, as you ask, what do we do then for me is to look for a product or a savings product yes. that fits your lifestyle mm -hmm. depending on the saving structure you have if i'm earning we have something called save as you earn so that you dedicate a certain amount let's say i have a short-term goal of buying a car in three years mm -hmm. then i say i'll put ten thousand shillings per month and then out of that, I'll earn the interest, and then after that contractual period, then I'll remove all the money and go purchase that car. So th those things go together, have the goal, aspire, or what you're aspiring to do, as mm -hmm. it's been said, and then start that journey, have that discipline, put that amount aside every month until you achieve that goal in two, three years that you've set yourself to. So product is very very critical okay. that you, at the end of the three years you don't come and say but you didn't tell me there's no discharge you didn't tell me there's no withholding tax you didn't tell me this then you have another different conversation with the customer definitely product is very critical and uh, I, i'm glad and deep you raised the uh, you know the issue of of the messaging and that come it comes to you now uh Daktari, dr Uma. The, the issue, you come from Retirement Benefits Authority and, and savings for the longest time has been synonymous with, you know, you're saving for old age. That's why somebody who's 20, they're making their mark. They're like, okay, I'll be old when I turn 60 in the next 40 years, yeah? So I might as well start in the next 10 years. In terms of that retirement aspect of it, as RBA, have you tried to, what are you doing to sort of woo more Kenyans to to think about those, uh, you know, sunset years when they will not be able to work but still need to sort of consume and live life. Thank you, Noah, for that great question. 
And that is where our biggest challenge lies. That the younger generation, those who live only once, most of them are the young. And you rightly observe that in the African continent, youth is a factor. And they don't see retirement because retirement is in the long distant future. So who knows whether I'm going to reach there or not. What do we do as the regulator and indeed the entire pension sector? Our pension system, I think, uh, is largely voluntary. So we do a lot of preaching the pension gospel. That eventually you are going to reach retirement. You will not remain young forever. And we do a lot of sensitization and we team up with various stakeholders like the micro and small enterprises authority and even our service providers that we license in the pension sector and largely the message is out there and they know that they need to save for their lives in retirement mm -hmm. the challenge that they have is taking that call and start saving for retirement well, you might want to know that to date, the pension coverage is 25%. It has gone up slightly from around 15% where we were almost 10 years ago and for a very long time. So that message is, go is getting home and people are making that decision. But the rate at which they are making that decision is a big challenge to us. And we have provided very many vehicles of pension savings. We have a total of 1,076 pension schemes. The ones that are set by employers, the ones that are set by businesses, independent pension plan, mm -hmm. and we have the mandatory one, the National Social Security Fund, to which every formal worker and informal worker is required to save for retirement. The challenge is taking that call. But I think we need to do much more than that. Okay. And I think we are entering a phase where institutional saving is getting traction. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes human beings where I started, we think they are rational, but they can also be rational. At the point of irrationality, probably it should take effort for decision makers to make a very critical decision for people in their lifetimes. Okay. They may not like it at the point that decision is made, but in the long term, they will really appreciate it. So going forward, we are thinking like, should we make a call and take that decision for them? So that as soon as you get your first job, your first paycheck, or as soon as you become of age, 18 years plus in Kenya, we enroll you into a pension scheme by default. And then SSF is here. Mm -hmm. We shall be curing the first challenge that we have in the sector, and that is growing pension coverage. But that alone is not enough, mm -hmm. because we want you to have decent incomes when you have retired. But that is a better problem to have than not having people enroll into pension schemes. That other problem would be inadequacy of income in retirement. Okay. When you have convinced them and they have enrolled, or when you have enrolled them by default, coverage would shoot up to 50%, 60% overnight. And that's a good thing. Okay. The challenge we'll have, are they okay. saving now enough to keep them through? All right. That will require different sets of tools to use, and it's a better problem to have than having low pension coverage. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uma. And uh, uh, we'll be coming later on. We want to sh take a short break. I know SACO is uh, one of the popular means at which people save and also mobilize credit. How exactly is that performing and how can we make it better as a saving platform? I will be having that conversation. But right now, we want to take a short commercial break right here the transform can you remember conversation is about saving today being the world savings day every 31st of october from 1924 to debt still ongoing well it's powered by the ministry of labor and social protection post bank retirement benefits authority and safaricom sacro societies limited these are our partners in this conversation we'll take a short break we'll return with more stay tuned Um Kenya, empower our nation.